Good morning, everyone. Welcome again. Um, we were, last time I spoke, I talked about, I spoke about, is getting back to basics. And just the little fundamentals of when we get up in the morning, um, saying a prayer to the Lord, and uh, just a small prayer, uh, just thanking him for that we woke up in the morning, you know, just the, just the little things. And uh, also reading the Bible. Do we, you know, even if we're on the go, we slept in, we're going to work, we're hustling, bustling, and whatever, um, you know, even to open up the Bible and just, uh, um, just to say um, one verse maybe, or read a chapter, whatever you can read, every little bit counts. The Lord sees your faithfulness and your goodness and your willingness to stretch. So sometimes I even sleep in, so I have a hard time but guess what? I throughout the day, I, even if I do a verse, and then I go back and read during the day when I have a few minutes here and there. The Bible says that absent, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So sometimes people, when they go to bed at night, even to say evening prayer, because sometimes some people just don't wake up in the morning. Um, you know, they've had a heart attack at night. Different things can happen to different people. Aneurysms, strokes, whatever, you know. And uh, we don't wish that on anybody, but it's there and it's relevant. And there's a, you know, quite a few people that have been passing away. So uh, I just want to bring that into just the little things that God wants us to be faithful with. And um, there's sometimes there's idols in our homes. We don't know what they are. Sometimes um, uh, you whatever's more important for you for that day. Um, sometimes people want to watch TV all day, or do gaming, or be on Instagram, or um, Netflix, or Facebook. You know that is an idol, and when it takes over. It's an idol. So we've got to be very careful how much time we spend on this. If you're working at it, that's okay because you need it for work. But just be careful how much time you spend on that. Okay? I also touched on communion last week. There's also uh, papers on communion. There's seven different points. Commu why communion? Communion has seven different pointers in it for us to learn. And we're going to we have communion every Sunday after I finish speaking, we have communion. So after the pastors finish, that's one of the things that was prophesied for us to do, where we come and we bow our heads. And um, even if we had anger or fear, uh, any little thing in our bodies, you know, that's kind of wanting to dominate and that's a struggle or a thought in our brain, in our mind that's negative. Bring that to the Lord. We bow our heads and we say, Lord, um, I, I did whatever and I ask you to forgive me. So before you have communion, we'll just bow our heads and we ask the Lord to forgive us for any sins that we've committed and then we'll take communion. And um, I would like for everyone to open up their Bibles at uh, Romans 10, verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9. And it's about salvation. Romans 10, verse 9. Is everyone there? Now, some Bibles, it's missing. It's not there. So I'm not sure if the printer made a mistake or the people wanted to make the mistake of not having it there, but that's the salvation message. And that's one of the things that we need to also consider. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, 
in short form, if you confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord and forgive you for all your sins, you will definitely be in the Lord's arms when you pass. And he'll change your life. So we're just going to bow our heads and just say a short little prayer concerning salvation. Dear Jesus, and you could repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you. And I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So it is all biblical. I just want you to be aware. Um, some things that we um, have here on Sundays, sometimes we just don't go through the little steps into Christianity. And when we said that prayer, we open up the door to God and us entering in to see him. And it says in the book of John 14, verse 1 to 4, God has many mansions, and he's there, and they're waiting for us. So as soon as we pass, and you've said that prayer, the mansion is going to be waiting for you, or there's many mansions. I don't know if we're going to get to pick them out. I'm not sure how he's going to do it, but he does it. And he does it his way. Amen? God, give us a spirit of revelation today. Give us the gifts and fruits of the spirit that we need to go on. Lord, place, place a new hunger inside of us. Eliminate the distractions. There's so much that we have to learn about you, Lord. Let the word of God speak to us today and every day. God wants you to rejoice refusing the wrong way about tomorrow. God can and he'll weave miracles in your most mundane day. And if you keep his focus on if you keep your focus on him, he will guide you. Stay in continual communication with him and present to him the requests in thanksgiving. Be thankful and let's be grateful to the Lord for what we have because there's so many people that are not in the same situation. Try to transform your weaknesses into strengths. Amen? I have a special announcement to make. And uh, I've been working on this for approximately, I guess, three years. And um, I've t I took the pastor's course during COVID. As a matter of fact, it was before COVID. And um, I was supposed to be ordained, but during lockdown, there was nothing that nobody could do, right? So Pastor Albert introduced me to Anchor Ministries last March. I had taken the course and I would passed it. But when you start off with a new organization, a new ministry, they actually want you to start kind of all, all not all over again, but into different um, areas. So I, um, I had my interview December the 28th, and um, I've received a call this week that I have passed it again. And um, I would, my license is on the way, so that we're going to have a commissioning service uh, when I do get the license on, in paper. Okay, so I'm not sure it's in the near future. So I just want you to all pray for me and um, that it's always move, we're always moving forward in this church. Um, I'm not sure how many pastors he's going to have in this church. He's got two here right now. Uh, at one time here about a year and a half ago, we had six pastors in this church. One passed away and others moved. So we don't know what God is up to. 
So we just leave it up to God and let him work all out the details. Amen? Amen. And thank you so much for all your prayers. Thank you. I was excited and I was happy. My brothers and sisters in Christ, there's been many churches and many pastors. Um, I hear different things about many pastors leaving the churches because of the times that we're in, churches closing up. Um, so I just, uh, I just want to say something to the church, nothing in negative, but just, um, just for prayer, okay? Never be in joy when you see or hear the devil disabling your church, your pastor, or your pastor's marriage, or his or her home, their finances, or the church. Pray for them. The Bible says, pray without seeking, seizing. Never be in joy when the devil is campaigning to dirty your pastor. Never be happy when you see the devil attacking the pastors or the churches or your spouse to destroy their ministry and their church. It's a 24-hour-a-day job, seven days a week. And they need your prayer and all your support. The sermons, your giftings, if you hear anything from the Lord, if you get a dream, or you know somebody needs help, uh, we're a church that helps uh, everyone. We have a food bank here. We have a clothing outreach. If you see anybody that's in need, that's uh, a burnt out victim or a victim in crisis, let us know because we're there to help them, okay? There's a quote from Billy Graham, and this quote just struck me. And he said, when he was alive, he said, he or she, he or she is already wounded, so don't finish them off. Let's all heal wherever is meant to be and leave the wounded soldiers in the church and we pray for them. Don't leave the wounded soldier that's out there. These are all soldiers for Jesus Christ. These are all willing vessels and we all need prayer, and we all to stand by one another. So we're all soldiers, so hang in there, phone somebody, call somebody, pray with one another, um, just mentor one another, be there whenever you can for one another. We're, we're a village, and we're a church, so hang in there, and God bless you. Thank you so much for all your prayers. I'd like to just bring up something, something really um, cute, just to soften the blow here. There was this couple. They were going to the Holy Land. And uh, the mother-in-law wanted to go with them to the Holy Land. And um, oh, after them speaking for a little while, then they says, OK, you can come. So the mother-in-law went with them to the Holy Land with this couple. And the mother passes away. So the undertaker said to the man, he said, um, we can ship her body back. It's going to cost you $5,000. Or you can leave it here, and it's going to cost you $150. The man thought about it and said, I will ship her body back home. The undertaker comes back and says, why would you ship her body and cost $5,000 instead of the $150, and she can stay here. The man replied, 2,000 years ago, a man died and was buried, and three days later, he ran away, and I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> That softens the blow, right? <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. Anyhow, 
Uh, I would like to share Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon is found against you shall prosper, and no, every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment shall slow you to the wrong. Do certain situations in your life always seem to trigger thoughts that you don't want and, and can't seem to get rid of? It's a stronghold that's built in your mind, a fortress that attracts and holds certain kinds of thinking. There's a battle going on, and it's taken place in your mind. God has a great plan for you and for your life. But the enemy is trying to deceive you and destroy you and your thought plan. If you will allow him to attack, he will. But we got the word of God. Use the word of God so that it can attack him. God will set you free from the strongholds in your mind. He will change your thoughts and your life. And he will start, you will start experiencing the abundance he has planned for you all along. Amen? That's just going to little basics. Sometimes we've got different things that we're thinking about. So concerning the absent from the body, present with the Lord, that's another thing is some people seem to think we go to purgatory, go here, we go there after we pass away. The Bible says strictly, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So we are face to face with him. Now concerning baptism, um, these are just little things, tidbits that are little ch our childlike faith, but also little things that we need to know when we're starting our walk with the Lord. Baptism in Acts 2, verse 38 is, Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Babies can't repent. They can't repent. So baptism, the word baptize means to dip or immerse. We have a baptism here every year. Usually it's in September after all the, the people are gone from the holidays and, and uh, it's quieter. And we go to Lake St. Peter, down here just a kilometer or two down the road, and we baptize people and we put them down underneath the water, and then they come back up again. That's the right way to baptize. And so we do that every year here. So if you ever want to get baptized, just see Pastor Albert or myself. The Lord says also in his word that Matthew 3, verse 6 says, And we were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing our sins. So we confess our sins before we get baptized. Amen? In Ephesians 4, verse 5, it says, There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So God is very clear about what he says in his word. And he also says he's a very jealous God. He's a jealous God. So we got to really be careful what we do in our lives. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to tell you, as baby Christians, there's some here that are, you know, there's a fine line with certain things, and we've got to really be committed and just go by the word of God. Just read your Bible. It'll come to you. Concerning homosexuality, because that's, that's a subject nobody wants to talk about but it has to be talked about. In Romans 1, verse 17 to 32, it says, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burnt in their lust, one for another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving of themselves that recompense 
of their error, which was meat. And it's not only men with men, it's women with women. And there's many scriptures. There's scriptures in Leviticus. There's uh, scriptures in Matthew where it says, uh, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to a wife. There's also some in Revelation. So it's very clear. Malachi 3.10, this is concerning tithing now. So we're just touching base on these things, and I'm just giving you some um, uh, Bible scriptures so that you have a basis to go on, okay? Malachi 3.10 says, Give ye all your tithes to the storehouse, so there will be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there's not room enough to receive it. Luke 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. By the same measure that you meet with all, the same measure will be given to you again. And my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 7 verse 2 says, Abraham gave one-tenth of what he had. And we are to give one-tenth off the top of our tide to the storehouse, to God. To, that's so that you can prove to him, not to me, not the church, that's towards him so that he will see your faithfulness and he will bless you. He does the blessings. Say if your paycheck is $500 a week or if it's $500 a month or $500, say, every two weeks, when you get your check, $50 right off the cuff goes to, to the church. What belongs to Caesar goes to Caesar. What belongs to the Lord goes to the Lord. That's also biblical. Proverbs 3, verse 9 says, it's the first fruits. So it is in the Bible. You can look it up. This is all scriptures. The first fruits always off the top goes to the Lord. concerning women pastors. There's also more that on homosexuality, but I think I've got the point across, and I don't want to reiterate too much into it, okay? But it's woman and woman also. Women pastors, some people don't, or just are not comfortable with women pastors. If God calls you to be a pastor, you have to listen to God. Whether you like it or not, you've got a calling on your life. There's different giftings that God gives people. Some people are computer analysis. Come, some people are prime ministers. Some people are pastors. Some are teachers. Some are um, secretaries. Uh, some are doctors. Some are nurses. So we all have different callings that different God has given everybody. So go for your calling, okay? And he also gave people churches. He gave people the mentality to build the churches so they're God's churches. In Ephesians 4, verse 11, it said, it says, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. He, he's, ne he's no respecter of persons. It's either male or female. Neither male or female, so he doesn't say it's just a man or just a woman. In the Old Testament, it says a woman shall compass a man. If the man is called to the ministry to be a pastor and he doesn't want to pastor, then he can pass it on to his wife or his son or vice versa back into the family. In the book of John, 
it says, the woman at the well. The woman at the well was the first woman evangelist, and that was in biblical times. And um, it didn't go over very well. But she went into the city, and she brought back 5,000 people that Jesus could pray for and lay hands on, and they were healed, and they accepted Jesus. The woman at the well. There's also the book of Esther. Esther fasted for three days and three nights with the town, and she saved a whole nation. That is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But she went to the king, and she didn't know if he was going to kill her or not, but she did what the Lord spoke to her to do. There's Lydia. There's Eunice. There's Hannah. There's Mary, the mother of Jesus. Who would she, how would she know that she was going to raise a king that would rule the whole world? How did she know she didn't? She just listened to Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit spoke to her, she went by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And she saved the whole world. Imagine. God has prophesied over me many times, maybe seven or eight times, different times. And I just took it in my spirit, and I wouldn't say anything. And I've never really spoke to Mike about it because it was God. It's up to God, whatever God wants to do and what he wants to do at his timing. I have to listen to God because he's my head. When I was having my interview on the 28th of December, my last one, Judy, God bless her heart, Judy was one of the people on the panel. And she started to pray for me before she actually had me on the interview. There, I, there was a, a whole table of people. Um, and I just want to share something with you, uh, the trials that I went through. Okay, I mentioned to you about having the course. Then I had to go through this again. Um, I need to go for a police check. So I tried my police check seven times before I got it. And I don't even have a criminal record. So the enemy was trying to stop whatever he had, whatever God had for me. Then when I get the, the police check, then... Um, the, the emails that I had for people that were going to be, um, they were going to be interviewed on my behalf. Um, the emails weren't getting through. Uh, there was months, there was almost six months where there was, there was nothing. The email, the emails that I used for the people with their email address, it wasn't connecting with the ministry. So it took, I, I don't know, maybe five or six different people that I had to give. Finally, it came through. Then at the very end, when I did, um, when I had my interview, um, Jeremy said, he says, if anything is going to happen during this, it's going to happen with Janet, because everything's been happening with her. <laughs> and I don't know why, but anyways, I was very cool about it. You can ask my daughter, Teresa. Uh, I was <laughs> kind of upset, but I stayed cool. So anyway, the third time, uh, we were on Zoom, and when we were on Zoom, I was talking to, a, I was talking to the panel, and they were going to hook me up. They could see me, they could hear me speaking, I couldn't see them, and I couldn't hear them speaking. And you, I could hear them speaking, but I couldn't see them. So even at the very end, the enemy didn't want me to do what I'm supposed to do. But God is greater, amen? we got to give him all the credit, amen? amen? So Judy prayed, and she said God gave her a vision about me that I would be wearing a pair of socks. The socks would be all the ones that have the individual toes in them. Five ministries. The pair of socks, they'd be all different. And they'd be separated and they're really hard to walk in because I've tried that. You can't put them in a boot or a shoe. <laughs> it's just uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. She said, my ministry would be very unique, very different. 
than any other. A different walk, a separate walk, an apostolic walk. And uh, my giftings will not be normal. The move for Mike and I into this church, she said, was a very strategic move by God. So we don't understand why certain people are taken away from us. And um, we were devastated when the pastor resigned, the last pastor, the first pastor that was here, he um, actually retired. The next pastor resigned during COVID. And so Mike was on the board and he was president. So here we are, we're left with the church, with 10 people in the church. We don't know what to do. We have a thrift store that's open from Tuesday to Saturday. We have a food bank twice a week that's open. It's open now once a week. So here are people that are needing our help. Uh, we're not pastors. We're just helping the church by being on the board. I had done Sunday school. I had worked in the clothing outreach. I had worked in the food bank. I had been ushering here. I did communion. I did different things here. So I didn't know what God was molding us and shaping us for. But this was what it was for. Now we know. But we were so devastated. We just didn't know what to do. And we prayed. We took it to God. And so when we went to the congregation that was left, they said, open up the church. What are you waiting for? We'll help you. We'll be here with you. So it's like when we had the backing of them, we opened up the church, and we had a first service August the tw 2nd of 2020. Amen? Yes. I'm just nodding at Mike to see if that was the exact date. <laughs> Anyhow, we haven't looked back. We've made many changes. There was many things that had to be done. Roofs, uh, gates, um, cameras, the sound system, um, uh, just, uh, just computer, uh, just on and on and on. But we've had boards here that have been very, very good to us and helped us through this. Through thick and thin, we are here. And uh, we've got support from our families, our loved ones, the people in the community. And we're just so blessed to be able to be here and to share with you. This is a full gospel church, so everything from Genesis to Revelations is spoken here. So there's, if anybody comes and they just want to talk about prayer cloths, that's in the book of Acts. If anybody just wants to come and has miracles the whole way through, all service through, that's also in, in the book, in the in Bible. So anything that's preached here is biblical. Amen? The Bible is the oldest book in the world, and it also has the most copies. I use the King James, and I use the Amplified, and I use the New King James. But if you have a preference, other than that, that's fine too. That's up to you. I would also like to bring in, um, now back, getting back to the basics, is alcohol. Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, be not drunk with wine. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Anything that alters the mind, you have to stay away from because it's altering. And you can do different things. Um, I'm not sure. I know I drank and I know it altered my mind. But once I became a Christian, that all kind of went away. Swear not. The Bible says swear not. In Revelations 2 and 3, it talks about the churches, the seven churches. There is Ephesus, Serena, Pergamos, Tartaria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Those are the churches that God has put on the face of the earth. And they're all in the Bible. They're all in Revelations. You can read it back there. 
the one church, he says, I will spit you out of my mouth. So I'm not sure which church it is, but we have to be very careful what church we go to and what they're teaching. 1 Corinthians says, in, in 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 8 says, spiritual gifts, these are about the gifts. There are spiritual gifts. There's the book of, there's spiritual gifts as wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretations of tongues, and we lay hands here on the sick, and they shall recover. So there's tongues as well here. So if you hear anybody speaking in tongues, that's of God. So that's in the Bible. That's in Corinthians. So don't be surprised if you come and somebody's speaking in tongues. Or they're praying for you, and all of a sudden tongues come out. Folks, there's many things concerning the basics, but these are a few simple ones that I've shared with you, and they're all biblical. I would like to say a prayer with you, and this is going to be the final, and I'd like for you to repeat after me, and it's replacing different things, and uh, I'll, just, I'll just give you just an inkling of one, and then I'll... I'll start. Replace the fear within us with a strong faith. So it's replacing things that we're maybe thinking about in our minds, but he wants to replace it with a strong faith. Okay? So um, we, will, we can bow our heads, and then this way it's more intimate with the Lord. And it's to make you feel good. It's because what we're trying to do is replace things in minds and strongholds in our mind and, and, and replace it with God's godly wisdom. Come Holy Spirit. Replace the tension within us with a holy relaxation. Replace the tribulation within us with a sacred calm. Replace the anxiety within us with a quiet confidence. Replace the fear within us with a strong faith. Replace the bitterness within us with a sweetness of grace. Replace the darkness within us with a gentle light. Replace the coldness within us with a living warmth. Replace the night within us with your light. Replace the winter within us with your spring. Straighten our crookedness. Fill our emptiness. Dull the edge of our pride. Sharpen the edge of our humility. Light the fires of our love. Quench the flames of the lust. Let us see ourselves as you see us, Lord, that we may see you as you have planned and promised. And be fortunate according to your word. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Thank you, congregation. God bless you, and we shall have communion now. Amen.